According to the Gun Violence Archive, there have been 42 mass shootings across the United States since the start of November. The tragic shooting at the University of Virginia shows that colleges are also vulnerable. We have more details on USM's public safety plan coming up. The flu is on campus earlier than ever. However, it doesn't have to dampen your Christmas spirit. We have some tips for you to stay healthy at the top of the show. Speaking of Christmas, it has come early for USM football and basketball fans. After their win on Saturday, USM football team is heading to their first bowl game in three years. As a bonus, USM's basketball team is 8-0 and at the top of the Sun Belt. I was skeptical at first, but this may be one of the best USM basketball teams. But until they play Northwestern State on Sunday, we have a lot in forecast for events on campus. I see what you did there, Asia. News, weather, sports, and more begin right now on SMTV. Chuck Scarborough Television Studio on the campus of the University of Southern Mississippi. This is SMTV News, news you can use. Good evening, USM. I'm Garrett Grove. And I'm Jeterica Wilson. Thank you for tuning in to SMTV. In the United States, there have been more mass shootings than days in 2022. Just recently, these tragedies have killed partygoers at a Colorado club, shoppers at a Virginia Walmart, and even students at universities much like ours. SM2 reporter Simeon Gates spotted a growing trend amid the carnage, the normalization of mass killings. The recent mass shooting at the University of Virginia brings up an important issue. Are young people becoming desensitized to mass shootings? And are there steps the USM community can take to protect ourselves? The November 13th shooting, which claimed three lives and injured two others, is just one on the long list of those caused by the senseless violence of mass shooters. The Gun Archive, a nonprofit that tracks gun violence deaths, calculated that the UVA shooting was just one of about 600 mass shootings that have occurred in 2020 so far. These stories have become disturbingly common in American news and culture, and to the point where many are concerned that people, especially younger generations, are becoming more and more unfazed by them. SM2 News caught up with various students to get their opinions. Um, no, you can never become immune to it. I'm worried that as more of them happen, less people around the world seem to care and be less motivated to help as it becomes a more regular thing, and I'm hoping that society will continue to step up and help. This conversation also begs the question, what can we do to stop it? Assistant Vice President of Public Safety and Chief of UPD Rusty Keys had one word, communication. But again, in that type of situation, everybody's got to communicate, everybody's got to talk and listen, and everybody's got to be on the same page and train together and work together so we can all prevent it together. It's not just on one person or one entity. It is easy to become numb or overwhelmed by fear in times like these. But it's important to remember that things are never as out of control or hopeless as they seem. Simeon Gates, SM2 News. It's that time of the year again. The leaves are changing colors, the air is getting cooler, and fireplaces all around are blazing. Unfortunately, the flu season is making these things a little less enjoyable. We are seeing a drastic increase in flu cases around the Hattiesburg community. Typically, the flu virus starts attacking its victims after the Thanksgiving holiday. However, that was not the case this year. The CDC reported that there have been 13,883 positive flu, ca flu cases reported the week of November 5th. USM has recently had numerous students out sick due to the flu. Symptoms include, but are not limited, to fever, chills, cough, sore throat, runny nose, headache, and fatigue. We are seeing an increase in cases a little sooner than we've seen in years past. It's kind of peaking a little bit more, and it will likely peak again uh, before flu season's over. Um, but definitely seeing kind of a rise um, before the Thanksgiving holiday, which is, is a little bit unusual. Contact your local health care provider to schedule an appointment to get vaccinated. You can also call the Moffitt Health Center at 601-266-5390 to do the same. Lights of the Wild has been a holiday tradition for the Hattiesburg Zoo since 2019. This year, it's back and it seems just as bright as usual. 
Lights of the Wild will take place December 2nd through 4th, 9th through 11th, and the 16th through the 23rd from 6 o'clock p.m. to 8.30 p.m. The lights portray wildlife and flora from all around the world. The community will also have the chance to have story time with Mrs. Claus, the Asbury Discovery Center. Plus, St. Nick himself will be here to take photos with anyone in the Africa Pavilion. Lights of the Wild is our annual holiday event here at the Hattiesburg Zoo. Um, and so what that event entails is a plethora of different types of LED lanterns. Um, and what those lanterns consist of, they're um, LED bulbs within and they're coated with a silk screen. Some have airbrush paintings, but they range from different types of aquatic animals, um, zebras, giraffes, um, nutcrackers, Christmas trees. Um, and so that's the big hit for this year is we're unveiling a lot of our newer lanterns that we received this year. You can purchase your discounted ticket on December 2nd through 4th and December 9th through 11th for $14. The tickets will cost $18 from December 16th through December 23rd. Children under two years old get in for free. Going into tomorrow, the Hub City is waiting with glee for the 72nd annual Hattiesburg JC Christmas Parade. Let's hand it over to Jackson Howell of Southern Miss today, who had a chance to talk with Hillary Long and Witt Sanginetti, who are in charge of making sure everything runs smoothly tomorrow. The 72nd annual Hattiesburg JC Christmas Parade takes place this Thursday at 6 p.m. in downtown Hattiesburg. Guys, how are y'all today? Man, excited to be here. Have it a great afternoon. Thanks first for having thing, us. First thing I want to ask, thank you for joining us. Uh, it's probably the first work day after Thanksgiving. How was y'all's Thanksgiving? Not not long enough. I feel like I uh, I was off for five days, but you get two days of traveling in there and need a vacation <laughs> for my vacation now. <laughs> I have rather or I have a rather large family, so uh, it's always fun to get together with the 180 people that show up. Ooh, I feel for you a little bit there, but for each of you, uh, what made you decide? to get involved with the Christmas parade, the planning of it, and maybe what have been some of y'all's favorite aspects so far? For me, it's probably the history that it has based for the city. I mean, after 70, 72 years, yeah, I mean, the, the, fact that, uh, the fact that it's been going on this long, it originally was running through uh, Main Street in downtown Hattiesburg, but because of uh, traffic changes and uh, basically the logistics that they had to grow, pathways have had to change and obviously with the uh with the beloved roundabout that is now installed mm -hmm. downtown we we ended up moving it again for this for this year but uh yeah prob probably the history that it has to the city uh for me i just I, it's a merry time of year and um there's just so many different types of people involved in, in putting this together different performing groups and so it doing it at the um when when I got involved in 2016, that was the first year that they were doing, um, Toby Barker was doing his tree lighting event. And so it was just really exciting to see all these creative minds just come up with a bunch of different stuff. And then, like he said, that finding out that something's been around that long, you just kind of want to be a part of it. Um, so it's just, I think every year has grown. We got offset during COVID, and I think it's uh, back bigger than ever this year. Yeah, during 2020, we actually had to... Uh we had to pivot a little bit. We ended up doing a uh, live streamed shoebox parade because we couldn't have Which people that awesome. were gathering together. Yeah. So what we ended up doing was having people decorate different shoeboxes and we uh, pulled them across the table as the, as if they were traveling down the street. It was, it was a pretty interesting thing, but we just couldn't miss up on that 70th year. Absolutely. Who came up with that idea? Cause that's definitely interesting. I believe that was actually our uh, state president, uh, Bethany Miller. Okay. Yeah, we, we, we just had a lot of people that came together and loved the idea and just made it happen. It was shot really cool. Coming up next, we'll take a you look at we have in our Flash News Briefing and Sports Recap. But before then, let's hand it over to Brooke Parker for the weather.
Afternoon Golden Eagles, here's your seven day forecast. We had a lot of rain last night and it, you can expect some more of that as the week develops. But first let's have a look at our high and our lows. So um, pretty solid week. We're going to be around the 60s and the 70s. Um, Wednesday and Thursday is going to be a little cooler, but this weekend it's going to warm up. Um, you can expect a warmer weekend and a, get a bit of a break from the cold. And we're going to have a look here at our rain chances. So um, Saturday, we're going to have a pretty high percentage of rain, so you're probably going to want to break out an umbrella. The rest of the week is looking more like scattered um, showers um, throughout the day, but nothing too heavy. With any kind of rain, we want to keep our eagles safe, which is why we're going to talk about our um, eagle alerts. Wait for them to pull that up here, and there we go. So you can subscribe to Eagle Alerts um, to get up to date on any kind of extreme weather that's happening in the Pine Belt. If you haven't already, make sure you sign up for that. And as always, we want to keep our eagles safe. So if you ever get a tornado warning, make sure that you find immediate shelter away from windows. And this is a really good um, resource that we want you to utilize. Thanks, SMTV. Back to you. Not again. Great. I'm going to be late. Call Lockout Locksmith. When every second counts, we are on the scene. You can count on us, your friendly neighborhood locksmith. We are available Monday through Saturday from 7 to 7. Call now. 601-854-6521. Or visit us at lockoutlocksmith.service. For news, weather, sports, and more, follow Southern Miss Student Media on all of our social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Good? Yep. I'm good. Okay. If your husband gets lung cancer from smoking, be prepared to spend a lot of time together. 88179. Just not the way okay. either of you imagined. The people you love are worth quitting for. You can quit. For free help, visit cdc.gov slash tips. I just feel so good. Good, good. I just feel so good. There are a couple of things outside of Hattiesburg that you need to know about. Here is your SMTV Flash News Briefing. On Friday, a 12-year-old boy was found dead in Jackson, Mississippi after playing a fatal game of Russian roulette. The boy, Markel Noah, was reported missing one night after receiving a text message from a friend asking if he could come over. Later, his body was found in the abandoned house. Jackson Deputy Derek Hearn reported that two minors involved in the case have been charged with murder. A 21-year-old has been charged with being an accessory to the crime. This is currently an ongoing investigation. As of now, no other information or further details have been released. University of Ohio students were robbed back on campus this week. It follows the stabbing deaths of four students that occurred more than two weeks ago. No arrests have been made. The four victims were stabbed to death in an off-campus home on November 13th. This Monday, University of Ohio classes resumed as Thanksgiving break came to an end. But police have stated that they believe the attacks were targeted and isolated cases. At this time, they have currently provided no evidence to support this claim. Many students have reported they're too afraid to come back to campus.
Others reported feeling unsafe walking on, co on college grounds without an arrest. This weekend, thousands of Chinese citizens headed to the streets in protest against their country's government for the first time in decades. Fifteen Chinese cities have harbored over 20 confirmed demonstrations of protest, which started after an apartment building in Ukimi caught fire Thursday. It took the lives of at least 10 people and injured at least nine. One reason those trapped in the building were unable to escape was because of China's intense COVID-19 lockdown measures. It seemed to prevent firefighters from entering the building in a timely manner. The protests that followed first demanded lessening lockdown measures. Now, the protests have grown to include the demand for more political freedom throughout China. This includes Beijing, the country's capital. Chinese citizens have been seen holding blank pieces of paper in a symbolic protest against the nation's harsh censorship since the signs themselves carry no message. While the Yumiki government has announced they would be lessening lockdowns, they did not address the protest. In other parts of the country, protesters have been forcibly removed and even arrested by police. Welcome to the SMTV Sports Recap, I'm Nathan Lee. We had a lot go down in Southern Miss Athletics with football team getting bowl eligible, men's basketball staying undefeated, and who captured the 4th Street Player of the Week. Golden Eagle football got a much needed 6th win on, of the season this weekend against the Louisiana Monroe Warhawks as they are now bowl eligible. Let's send it to SM2 Sports Director Austin Lindsay to see how the coaches and players are feeling after the historic win. In the final regular season game, the Golden Eagles are still in search of the elusive postseason play after a three-game losing streak against challenging Sunbelt teams. But they are now also facing the elements here with a rainy afternoon, and they'll need huge help on the ground from running back Frank Gore Jr. and company. We'll have more coming up soon here with SM2 Sports. You know, I think there's been a lot of turnarounds in this program through the years. This program has fallen a few times. We've had to build it back. And uh, very few times, I think, if you'll look through in the history of rebuilding this program, has a team gotten to a bowl game in year two. Uh, so that's a huge step for this staff and these kids. I came in here three years ago with, uh, with Coach Hop, and, um, you know, new coaches came in, and, and I stuck with them. I just wanted to keep with them, and, uh, you know, I, I believed them. I, I trusted them. I believed in them. And, uh, you know, and, and a lot of guys did. You know, a lot of guys, not a lot of guys left. And, and, you know, here we are, you know, going bowling, and, and just the progress is continuing into next year. I'm just glad our kids got rewarded for the fight they put in, uh, you know, because we have to overcome a lot sometimes. And, man, we battle and fight and do everything possible. And uh, this was a really good win for us tonight. Yeah, that's what we talked about in the locker room before the game is what are you going to do to spill it for your brother to play another game with them? And, um, you know, knowing that I get to play another game with E. Scott, I get to play another game with Natron and, you know, all those boys that are, that are going out. And and uh, we're going to put them out on a good note. And uh, we wanted to keep playing. So, you know, anything playing in December is fun. Going into the game, I knew how much I needed. And I wasn't going to let anything stop me because I knew this is history. And I knew we have a bunch of – we had a bunch of great running backs to get – through this program, so I wanted to put my name in that, that conversation as well. Let's get this bowl game. Uh, let's not just go to the bowl and just lose and just be there. Let's, let's get this bowl game and get a ring. Was a sigh of relief after a 20 to 10 defeat of ULM in Malone Stadium, where the Golden Eagle fans would erupt after finally getting that elusive win. Coach Hall would state that he doesn't care where they go, they're just happy to be bowling. Frank Gore Jr. would also have a phenomenal game with 199 yards rushing to reach that career. Season high mark of a thousand yards for the first time since 2017, with Edo Smith being the last Golden Eagle to do so. The Golden Eagles are psyched and pumped. We'll find out later where they are going to actually play that bowl game. But that has been all. This has been SM2 Sports Reporter Austin Lindsay. 
Ole Miss now waits for their bowl placement, with rumors leaning towards the Myrtle Street Bowl and the Lending Tree Bowl. Southern Miss men's basketball remained undefeated this week and have now eclipsed their season total of wins from last season in their first eight games. The Golden Eagles were able to get their two big wins last week against Mobile and Montana University. In the game against Mobile, Southern Miss would get key contributions with Felipe Hase's 17 points and Austin Crowley's 24 points. The Golden Eagles would go on to have their largest victory uh, largest uh, victory of the season, winning by a whopping 103 to 52. Southern Miss would keep it going this week with another double-digit victory, 64 to 54, over the Montana Grizzlies. Felipe Hase was all over the court once again with his 28 points and seven rebounds. The men hit the road for a game on Sunday, December 4th, at 3 p.m. against the Northwestern State Demons. Now it's time to name our, our Fourth Street Player of the Week, which it kind of feels like an obvious one, Frank Gore Jr. Gore saved, uh, saved his best for the last game of the season as he would eclipse 200 total yards with his 225 all-purpose yards, including 199 on the ground. This performance pushed Gore over 1,000 rushing yards on the season as well, with, now, with one, only one more game on the schedule. Don't forget to listen to the 4th Street Sports Show on Mondays at 5 p.m. on 88.5 FM. Next week is our last show of the semester, so do not miss out. This has been the SMTV Sports Recap. Back to you. Thank you, Nathan. Coming up, Brooke Parker returns to the set with a projected forecast for graduation and Christmas. Plus, Asia Way gives us the what's what on campus with the community calendar. Stay tuned. sexual assault to get in the way before it happens to get a friend home safe and to not blame the victim it's on us to look out for each other to, to not, not look, look the other way it's on us to stand up to step in to take responsibility it's on us all of us to, to stop, stop sexual, sexual assault. assault learn how and take the pledge at it's on us.org if you would like to advertise with Southern Miss Student Media, give us a call today at 601-266-4258 or reach out to Justin Martin at wilbur.martin at usm.edu. At a time when misinformation is all too common on social media, we take great pride in bringing you the news that matters, that impacts your family, news you can trust. Local broadcast journalists bring you the facts, covering the stories breaking in our community, and across the globe. Text TV to 52886 and let Congress know you depend on local journalism. This message furnished by the National Association of Broadcasters. From the Chuck Scarborough Television Studio on the campus of the University of Southern Mississippi, this is SMTV News, news you can use. We know some of you are eager to know what the weather will be like on graduation, and currently it's shaping up to be a nice day. On December 8th, there will be a light shower in the morning, but by six, the 6 p.m. ceremony, that should be all cleared up, and the rest of the day will likely be partly cloudy. On December 9th, it'll be a partly cloudy day with a bit of a cool breeze. So we're looking at about 64 and 61. Congratulations to those graduate, graduating. Enjoy your day. And if you're not graduating just yet, you still have the holidays to look forward to. So I asked um, in a poll what you guys thought the weather would be like on Christmas. And I think I can agree with the 60% of people who said it's going to be rainy and cold. Um, I'm used to a warm Christmas, as most of you probably are, but it has been a bit chilly lately. 30% of you were optimistic, thinking it's going to snow. 
I really admire the positivity here. Um, either way, we hope you have a great break and holiday season. Now let's hand it over to Asia Wade for the community calendar. The 72 second annual Hattiesburg Jacquees Christmas Party is going to be Thursday, December 1st from 6 to 645 downtown in Hattiesburg. Join NPAC for their Holiday Bash Hop Social. Come out this Thursday, December 1st from 7 to 9 p.m. in Union Room B. Be sure to wear your ugliest Christmas sweater. <laughs> Congratulations, seniors! The Kennedy graduation ceremony will take place December 3rd from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. in the Thad Cockinson on Barroom 2 and 3. Join Honors College for a puppy day on December 2nd from 11 to 1 p.m. at the Honor House. They will be accepting donations from Southern Miss Pines Animal Shelter. If you need a place to study, work on a group project, or practice a presentation, reserve a room in Mecklenmore Hall. Be sure to call them at 601 266-4153 or stop by Macklemore 125 to reserve your spot for the room. They will also be giving out survival kits. This concludes Southern Miss Community Calendar. This has been Asia Wade. Back to you guys at studio. So guys, how are you guys feeling about the break finals graduation? I'm so ready for this break. Yeah. 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 I'm in the burnout stage, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Me too. Right. Yeah. For real. Well, I feel honestly, you know, it's been hard times, but you know God is good and we're on our way to the you. exit. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, y'all too are. That's yeah. Well, I know you are. I bet you're excited for a good birthday present because it's your birthday oh, today. Yeah. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday. Thank, Thank you, guys, yeah. you guys so much for watching in and tuning in SMTV. And as always, be sure to subscribe to Southern Miss Student Media on YouTube and follow us on social media. And you will be sure to find a new episode of this show every Wednesday evening. Well, starting next semester. <laughs> I know. This is the last episode of the fall 22 mm, semester. Look at that. <laughs> it's still just as fun to do the 13th episode as it was to do the first one. <laughs> I agree with that one, Jatera. Okay. But we do have to, you know, say goodbye. We got we got two of our, our best in, uh, people of the uh, Student Media Center, mm -hmm. Asia and Brooke, mm -hmm. are, are, are graduating in just nine days. They I will be missed. I gotta show it off. Yeah, she's gotta show it off. Mm -hmm. You know, we're so happy for them and we are so excited to see, you know, y'all's next step in y'all's chapters in life, y'all. We're really proud of you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you guys, you. that yes. means so much. Oh, Appreciate yeah. the love and support. Yes, exactly, we, we, we truly do love what y'all have done. Oh, yes. But in the meantime, we're gonna finish strong for the rest of this semester. We still, we, we will be back to work at SMTV starting in January. This has been Asia Wade, Garrett Grove, Brooke Parker, Jeterica Wilson, and I'm Nathan Lee. Happy holidays and as always, Southern Miss to, to the, the top. top. Oh yeah, this is so great. Oh yeah. SMTV News episode? Find us and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Southern Miss Student Media. The University of Southern Mississippi Student Media Center is the heartbeat of the USM experience. The center is home to dozens of producers, writers, and visual artists of all types. In addition to news, entertainment, sports, music, and other programming, 
the center hosts a vibrant strategic communication division. It's made up of teams working on social media, advertising sales, graphics, and more. Everything is produced by students and for students under the guidance of the Student Media Center professional staff. The center is housed in USM's School of Media and Communication, just down the bricks from The Rock and the Student Union. School Director Ed Simpson says the Student Media Center serves as the loudspeaker for the USM student voice and the training ground for the next generation of media professionals. The Student Media Center is where our students get hands-on experience in real-world situations. That's because what we do serves real audiences and real clients. Whatever you see yourself doing, the Student Media Center has a place for you. We ask our students to find the truth and then tell it in a way that's compelling. When students produce something for a live stream or for the radio, they know they got to get it right. Working here in the Student Media Center, when we say hands-on, it's not a slogan, it's what we do. The Student Media Center is the voice of the Golden Eagles and home to the next generation of truth tellers, storytellers, and all those with the energy and desire to express their hearts in the fields they've chosen. Join us. The world is changing and we are changing with it as our students create, inspire, and inform. Beginning this fall, the School of Media and Communication will take its public relations master's degree fully online. That means students anywhere in Mississippi or around the world can get their advanced PR degree from the University of Southern Mississippi. Check us out as our students find new ways to create, inspire, and inform. 